to those who just want to know about it they have made up their minds whether or not they would like to so there are different kinds of people sitting here right now for those of you who have been wanting to get married and you have not been able to get married maybe we, look, we need to look at some things you want to get married who do you want to marry so that's the problem I do not know who to marry sometimes the way society runs seems to mislead us and that's one of the reasons many people have problems in this area to get married now I may say some things you never heard in your life today but just be cool <laughs> relax is there anybody here right now I, I want you to be honest with yourself is there anybody here you do not attend a Christ embassy church now I, I just want to know who's here you do not attend a Christ name as a church or maybe at least you haven't been attending and uh, you're here now I'd like to see your hand up please keep it up because I want to know you there are some your hands haven't come up yet you're waiting for me to make the comment I want to make I I'm waiting for you just wave your hand like this so I can see your hand I want to take time to look around okay thank you now the reason I did that is to say this you may hear some things you never heard in your life now just because you haven't heard those things doesn't mean they're wrong and if you do not agree with me it doesn't mean I'm wrong if you heard something totally different from what I have to say for so long in your life it still doesn't mean I'm wrong so I want to ask you every one of you to wisely and patiently think through the things I've got to tell you from the Bible hallelujah praise God now those of you from other churches anyway how, how in the world did you know this was taking place here I wonder if you were a total experience if you weren't there and you're here now <laughs> hallelujah Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God forevermore. If you've been wanting to get married and you've not, you just, things just haven't worked out. You don't know what to do. But you want to get married. I'll tell you what to do. Today is your day. You might as well say thank you Lord Jesus Amen <laughs> Sure I believe in miracles Different kinds My God will supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. No exceptions. Hmm. 
All right, so First Corinthians seventh chapter. First Corinthians seventh chapter. I know that many of you have read this portion of the Bible so many times. So many times you even have your private interpretations. So I want to read to you from the eighth verse. Because that um, from where we get the ones that concern you. First Corinthians chapter number seven and from the eighth verse. Now to the unmarried and the widows I say. To the unmarried and the widows I say. It is good for them to stay unmarried. As I am. But if they cannot control themselves, they should marry. What a reason to be married. Now I want us to make up our minds. Let's let's make a decision now on one thing. <laughs> Can we decide the word of God is right? Can we agree that the Word of God is the wisdom of God? Are we agreed? The Word of God is the wisdom of God. And whatever the Word says is right. No matter what we think. No matter the assumptions. God's Word is right. God's Word knows better than anybody. Are we agreed? Are we sure of that? Then listen to the voice of the Word of God. Now, verse 8, chapter 7, 1 Corinthians. Now to the unmarried and the widows, I say, it is good for them to stay unmarried as I am. But if they cannot control themselves, they should marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. He might as well say amen. Isn't it true? Are we agreed on this scripture? I didn't think you heard it. It is good for them to stay unmarried as I am. But if they cannot control themselves, they should marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. And I said, what a, what a reason to be married. Alright, let's, let's look at another one. Verse 25. Now about virgins. How many of you are using the King James translation here? Let me know, know what you're in. Okay, these are the children of King James. <laughs> Alright, okay. Um, okay, maybe I should read to you first Then we'll look at it from the other translation Verse 25, chapter 7 First Corinthians Now concerning virgins I have no commandment of the Lord Yet I give my judgment as one that hath obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful Hallelujah it is, I don't have a special commandment from God, but um, as I can be judged to be faithful in the things of God, I want to give you the word. So here he says, verse 26, I suppose therefore that this is good for the present distress, that is the present crisis. You see, there was a crisis period at the time. In the word and so he had to speak to them because of what was going on now I want you to listen to this I say that it is good for a man soul to be at thou bound unto a wife seek not to be loosed 
if there's somebody here, which I believe there would be, you're bound to a wife and you're looking for how to run out. You are joking. Oh, you're bound to a wife. No coming out now. <laughs> she got you. A thou bound unto a wife, seek not to be loosed. A thou lose from a wife, that now seek not a wife. But, and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh. But I spare you. Now, I, I want to read it to you from the NIV. And this is much clearer and communicates this better. Now about virgins, I have no command from the Lord, but I give a judgment as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. Because of the present crisis, I think that it is good for you to remain as you are. As you are what? This is now about virgins. This is I think it is good for you to remain as you are because of the present crisis. Are you married? Do not seek a divorce. Are you unmarried? Do not look for a wife. Somebody doesn't like that. <laughs> but if you do marry, you have not sinned. And if a virgin marries, she has not sinned. But those who marry will face many troubles in this life. And I want to spare you this. That's knock, knock, knock. You didn't get that. Somebody's trying to get your attention. Hello? I said somebody's trying to get your attention. So I want to read that again. He's trying to get your attention. So, get your catchers ready. I read again. Now about virgins, I have no command from the Lord, but I give a judgment as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. Because of the present crisis, I think that it is good for you to remain as you are. Are you married? Do not seek a divorce. Are you unmarried? Do not look for a wife. But if you do marry, you have not sinned. And if a virgin marries, she has not sinned. But those who marry will face many troubles in this life. And I want to spare you this. I read that last part again. But those who marry, now the wisdom of God is saying this to you. Jesus said, when you want to build a house, it's important that you count the cost. When you want to go to war, count the cost. Find out if you're prepared for it. The wisdom of God has said that those who marry will, he didn't say may, will face many troubles in this life and I want to spare you this I want to help you out of it that's what he's saying those who marry will face many troubles incidentally he didn't say during this crisis he said in this life pretty quiet now Now I don't know what's going through your mind. I don't know what you're thinking about. But let no man deceive you. All the love kisses and the love stories you find on TV are just 
some people acting out some other people's scripts. Not exactly what is there. You know, when you come into Jesus Christ, it is a bed of roses, and I must tell you that. Coming to Christ is a bed of roses. It is too. The only other thing that you need to know is that there is somebody in that bedroom with thorns and thistles waiting for you. It is a bed of roses. But you're in, <laughs> in the same room with someone goes out to frustrate you. Now I'm not talking about your wife and I'm not talking about your husband. I mean the devil. In other words, when you come to Christ Jesus, the life, the Christian life is wonderful. The Christian life is a great life. But with all the promises, with all the wonders of Christianity, you have an adversary. The Bible says you are promised one wonderful thing in Christianity and that is persecution. You must have it. And it is strong enough to get you tempted to want to quit. In the same way, the man tells you here that those who marry will face many troubles. He doesn't say the troubles are insurmountable. He didn't say, he didn't say you cannot deal with them, but he's letting you know ahead of time. Because they're going to face many troubles. Where they're going to come from, he hasn't said anything about that. But the point is, they will come because you are married. Whether they come from your spouse is irrelevant. Whether they come from in-laws is irrelevant. Whether they come from outer space is irrelevant. The point is, they come for one reason, you are married. In other words, if you weren't married, those particular problems wouldn't come. They come to those who are married. Like some persecutions only come to you because you're born again. Are you still there? Okay, is anybody who wants to go home now? It's time to go. Hallelujah. All right. I know some of you are hoping that I'll make it get better. I got more news for you. Verse 29. What I mean, brothers, and you might as well add in sisters, is that the time is short. From now on, those who have wives should live as if they had none. Not every wife likes to hear that. Those who mourn as if they did not. Those who are happy as if they were not. Those who buy something as if it were not theirs to keep. Those who use the things of the world as if not engrossed in them. For this world in its present form is passing away. I would like you to be free from concern. An unmarried man is concerned about the Lord's affairs. Aren't you glad? An unmarried man. For how long would you like to be that concerned about the Lord's affairs? <laughs> someone says, well, not too long. I heard someone said, this is my last single program. <laughs> May God make it so for you. <laughs> But I show, see, the next time we have singles meeting, if you are still single, you ought to be here. <laughs> so don't vow that vow yet until you have vowed to the lady. What I mean, mm -mm -mm -mm, verse 32, I would like you to be free from concern. An unmarried man is concerned about the Lord's affairs. How he can please the Lord. But a married man is concerned about the affairs of this world. How he can please his wife. 
and his interests are divided. His interests are divided. An unmarried woman or virgin is concerned about the Lord's affairs. Her aim is to be devoted to the Lord in both body and spirit. But a married woman is concerned about the affairs of this world. How she can please her husband. See why they can't come to church because the other one is in the Catholic church or something? I am saying this for your own good. Did you hear? That's the wisdom of God talking. He says, I am saying this for your own good. Not to restrict you, but that you may live in a right way in undivided devotion to the Lord. And Lord, everything I put my hands upon to do today will be successful because I do it in the name of Jesus. And when you take those materials you're working on, whatever they may be, you set out with prayer. You say, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I get to work.